Welcome back, everybody. Mr. Holmes here, going to talk to you about the masterpiece of the week. This week, we're talking about Piet Mondrain, another Dutch artist. And we are taking a look at this piece of his called, get ready for it, Broadway Boogie Woogie. Yeah, that's what's up. All right. So here's a quote from our man himself. He says that he wishes to approach truth as closely as possible. And therefore, I ab abstract everything until I arrive at the fundamental quality of objects. So this week, Mondrain's going to take us in a different direction than these realistic paintings and pieces we've been looking at. Uh, he's more of an abstract artist, and we're going to dive into that right now. So here is some images of Piet Mondrain throughout his life. Uh, on the left here is a, an early self-portrait. And then we have an actual photograph of him uh, and kind of the the mid years and on the right is near uh, when he lived in New York near the end of his life. So he's a Dutch painter. He was born in, in the Netherlands in 1872 and he died in New York, New York in 1944. Uh, Piet Mondrain is one of the founders of the Dutch modern movement called De Stijl. And he's recognized uh, for the purity of his abstractions and methodological practice by which he arrived at them. He radically simplified the elements of his paintings to reflect what he saw as the spiritual order underlying the visible world, creating a clear universal aesthetic language within his canvases. In his best known paintings from the 20s, uh, Mondrian reduced his shapes to lines and rectangles and his palette to fundamental basics, pushing past references to the outside world towards pure abstraction, as we saw in Broadway Boogie Woogie. His use of asymmetrical balance and simplified pictorial vocabulary were crucial in the development of modern art and his iconic abstract works remain influential in design and familiar in popular culture to this day. Here's another example of work that uh, Piet has created. This is called the Composition A, and this is in the style of De Stijl. Of the Netherlands-based De Stijl movement embraced an abstract, pared-down aesthetic centered in basic visual elements, such as geometric forms and primary colors. Partly a reaction against the decorative uh, process of Art Deco, this reduced quality of the steel art was envisioned by its creators as a universally visual language appropriate for the modern era, which is a time when the new spiritualized world order, led by the painters Dosenberg and Piet Mondrian himself, uh, they are their central figures there. Now, Composition A, uh, its title totally announces its non-objective nature by making no reference to anything outside of itself. Uh, we saw self-portraits before. We saw uh, landscapes of actual spaces. We saw group paintings. They all were rooted in real world things. And this composition A, it has no nature, no reference to anything but the composition itself. Uh, this is a great example of Mondrian's, uh, Mondrian's geometric abstraction before it fully matured. So this is kind of the beginning of his work. Next, we see when you enter the neoplasticism, neoplasticism era. Uh, now, neoplasticism is articulated by most completely by Dutch artist Piet Mondrian. Hey, that's him. That's what we're talking about. And it relied on the basic elements of painting, which are color, line, and form. Now, those three words just should sound really familiar. They're the elements of art we've been talking about since day one, right? Uh, so neoplasticism uses those basic forms to convey universal and absolute truths. Mondrain advocated for the use of a steward geometry and color to create asymmetrical but balanced compositions that conveyed harmony, underlying all the reality around us. Now, Mondrain and his other neoplastic artists thought that merging of painting, architecture, and design would hasten the coming of an ordered and harmonious society. They intended that this utopic version coming from the dynamic equilibrium sought out in the neoplastic paintings would spread to the interior of the studio, to the home, the street, the city, and guys, eventually the world. So this whole theory of creating this art style neoplasticism with these fine lines and basic shapes, they wanted to create a whole utopian society based on these principles. Here's some modern day uh, parodies of the piece. Someone did it in cake, which is pretty rad. Uh, of course, is a Simpsons example. It's a Simpsons example of everything. And here's a Star Wars Millennium Falcon. 
And uh, maybe more appropriate for today, here's a face mask using some of uh, P8's artwork. Now let's talk about the, the boogie woogie itself, right? So this canvas represents the viewer with the accumulation in Mondrain's lifelong pursuit of conveying the order that underlines the natural world through purely abstract forms on a flat picture plane. This and his other late abstract paintings, uh, they show a new revitalized energy that was directly inspired by the vitality of New York City and the introduction and tempo of jazz music. So we know that Piet Mondrain died in New York, New York in 1944. So this later work, like this piece we're studying this week, uh, was created during his, his elder period. Uh, this is where he's fully in his form, creating his best, best of his best pieces. Now the asymmetrical distribution of the brightly colored squares within the yellow lines, it echoes the varied pace of a life in the bustling metropolis. Uh, you can almost see the people hurrying down the sidewalk as taxi cabs intersect the horizontal lines. And you see that you can almost see the stoplights being interjected amongst this grid. Broadway Boogie Woogie uh, was not only alludes to life within the city, but also heralds New York's developing role as the new center of modern art after World War II. Mondrain's last complete painting demonstrates his continued stylistic innovation while remaining true to his theories and format. And that is Broadway Boogie Woogie by Mondrain. So I'm really curious to see what you guys sketch for this. This is kind of a hard one to sketch, a lot of straight lines. Uh, I encourage you to use your rulers and please add color if you can. It could be a fun one to see. All right, everybody, I'll see you in class. Mr. Holmes out.